Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, the pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Okay, today we're going to talk about statins and more. Uh, Statin is an HMG CoA reductase inhibitor that uh, will be important as we kind of go through here. That's how it works. Um, I'll focus a lot on the statins, but I'll also talk about some uh, adjunct therapy as well or some other choices. So really what we're talking about here uh, is atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease and uh, you've probably had physiology where you start with that normal artery and you get that fatty streak you get a plaque and then a complicated plaque. So statins do a good job of lowering LDL and we can use L for lousy cholesterol or bad cholesterol and um, move cholesterol from the plaque to stabilize it. Now the evidence is a little bit weak in terms of you know making a plaque smaller but again it, it stops the, the madness I guess you would say. Okay. Um, we're always looking for lifestyle changes. I uh, use the mnemonic change your fates. So increase fiber, increase food that's good for you, decrease fat, uh, decrease alcohol, or stop tobacco, stop alcohol. Uh, Exercise, uh, increase exercise, and then decrease uh, your sodium. So again, uh, really the lifestyle changes are the first place that we go, but um, there are so many uh, good medications for hyperlipidemia uh, that Uh, We just go through them now. Okay, so HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. Let's start with the the suffix. It's Vustatin. Uh, Be careful. You'll probably hear statin a a lot of times, and that'll usually get you by. Uh, But, for example, if you look at the bottom right, uh, nystatin is not for lipids. It's uh, actually an antifungal. So uh, just be careful with that. Uh, We'll talk about this division in a second, about how really... You can use atorvastatin, rosuvastatin, which are Lipitor and Crestor, uh, at higher doses, and then you can use them at lower doses, and that actually means something. Uh, And then, just like you're going to have to worry about LFTs, the uh, liver function tests, uh, the other drugs are LFPs, so lovastatin, fluvastatin, pravastatin, and simvastatin. All right, so let's just talk about high intensity versus moderate intensity. Um, high intensity are the atorvastatin at greater than 20 milligrams, and rosuvastatin is at 40 milligrams. Because when, once we start you know, increasing those dosages, we're really worried about that myopathy that we're going to get and liver issues. And uh, we'll talk about adverse effects in a minute, but just know that if the patient is more fragile, uh, we would use something moderate intensity. If they're less fragile, high intensity. Uh, so Lipitor, I'm guessing that they were thinking like lipid gladiator. So this is the lipid lion uh, that is uh, being slain uh, by the HMG-CoA. How do we figure out high intensity versus moderate intensity? Uh, we're really looking at the clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, abbreviated as ASCVD. Uh, and we're worried about peripheral artery disease, uh, myocardial infarction, a heart attack, or a cerebrovascular accident. So if the patient is greater than 75, we'll probably go moderate. If they're less than 75, uh, we might go high intensity. Uh, If their LDL is greater than 190, we would go high intensity. Um, If they're diabetic, 45 to 70, um, and their ASCVD score is less than 7.5%, then moderate, and then higher than 7.5, high intensity. And then 45 to 70, um, we would go greater than 7.5% moderate intensity. So again, it's really just figuring out what their risk is of a coronary event uh, and how these medications can help. Um, You might see a bunch of statin mnemonics. There are a number of things that you you kind of want to watch out for with statins. Uh, First, S, skip the grapefruit juice. Uh, There is an issue with So the grapefruit juice increases the statin level in your body. And um, some, they say that some statins don't have this effect and some do, uh, but you'll be hard pressed to not find somebody that's just going to say, just go ahead and skip the grapefruit juice. Uh, The big one is toxic to muscles and joints and maybe rhabdomyolysis uh, is an unfamiliar term. 
Uh, but if you work out too much, too fast, uh, this will happen as well. Uh, but it can be toxic to the muscles and joints, and really it's myopathy uh, that we're going to see first. Uh, a for ALT, AST monitoring, uh, so the LFTs or liver function tests for liver injury. Uh, and then T tints the eyes yellow. Uh, again, kind of going from that liver injury. I, how does it work? Well, it, for lack of a better term, it just inhibits cholesterol production. And then N, um, one of the add-ons that we'll talk about is niacin, uh, which is an add-on when the triglycerides are just not getting lowered enough. So S, skip grapefruit juice, T, toxic to muscles, A, ALT, AST, T, tense eyes yellow, I, inhibits cholesterol production, N, niacin, add-on for triglycerides. Uh, atorvastatin or Lipitor, it's, this is our big dog. Uh, so hyperlipidemia and cardiovascular risk is the indication and uh, mechanism it is an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. So the big things that we're worried about are this, that muscle myopathy, the rhabdomyolysis, which is uh, you know progression from the myopathy, and then the yellowing eyes, which comes from a progression from the liver issue. So contraindications would be liver disease, and pregnancy, and then the things that you really want to watch for as a healthcare professional, you know, so looking for that myopathy, and I just put the three L's so you can think about lifting weights. Um, so it's really more about the muscles than lifting weights, uh, lifestyle, and the LFTs. Uh, Gemfibrozil, and which is lopid and phenofibrate, which is tricor. These are not statins, but they're really important uh, because. Uh, they're also good for hyperlipidemia and high triglycerides especially and so they can uh, decrease cholesterol production and they can also cause myopathy rhabdomyolysis and then the liver issues and especially with uh, gemfibrozil we're going to see that myopathy effect is more additive so when you have someone on a statin and gemfibrozil you're going to see that that myopathy more often uh, contraindications, well, liver disease and pregnancy, and then again, the, the three L's, the lifting, the lifestyle, and the LFTs, really just a way to remember the muscles are, are part of all this. So the next piece we get to is kind of that combination therapy, and we say, okay, well, we haven't decreased their LDL enough, so it's a statin and. So maybe it's a statin and niacin. Okay, so niacin blocks the enzyme for making cholesterol. And this would be good if we're, you know, have those elevated triglycerides, but also LDL to some extent. Uh, the big thing with the niacin is that flushing, and you can give the aspirin 30 minutes prior, and then maybe exacerbation of gout because of its effect on uric acid, so adding fluids. Uh, blocking cholesterol absorption, so acetamib or zetia, uh, again, this, uh, for cholesterol, but uh, it's an absorption inhibitor. So both azetamib and cholestyramine, those are going to block that cholesterol absorption. And you're going to see myopathy, but with that blocking of cholesterol absorption, you're also going to see fat-soluble vitamins, D, E, A, and K, uh, are going to be blocked as well. I always thought of it as a person named Deek, D-E-A-K. Uh, that's how I remember the fat-soluble vitamins, but uh, blocking those vitamins in addition to the cholesterol is a concern. Then cholestyramine, which is Questrin. Uh, this is not only for cholesterol, but also if you have chronic diarrhea. Uh, this can work as a bile acid sequestrant. And again, the, the DEEK vitamins are, are an issue here because uh, it is blocking um, uh, those uh, that cholesterol absorption. Uh, blocks the enzyme that regulates the number of cholesterol receptors. So the reason I said it that way was because the real name is proprotein convertase subtilisin kexin type 9, uh, which we abbreviate for good reason as PCSK9 inhibitors. Uh, so alarocumab, which is praluent, and evolocumab, which is repatha. Uh, both of those are uh, monoclonal antibodies um, that we would use for a specific type of cholesterol issue. They're like uber expensive, like super expensive. Um, combination therapy, so if we're now trying to decrease triglycerides rather than LDL, uh, we would add the niacin, fibrozil. Um, again, uh, just the way that they work, they do a good job with those triglycerides. And if we're thinking of decreasing triglycerides and increasing HDL, or just increasing HDL, again, niacin, gemfibrozil uh, are our uh, choice there. So. Um, kind of brings us back to uh, this last slide, which is a really uh, expensive uh, situation where 
Um, somebody does need one of those PCSK9 inhibitors or they'll go through the REMS to get the mipomersin. Um, these are for familial, familial hypercholesterolemia. So if somebody fails the high, high dose statins, then the alarocumab and evolocumab might be something you add on. Uh, and then mipomersin requires a, a REMS because of its uh, liver damage, but it works w way differently. It just binds to the messenger RNA of this uh, really important protein, LDL and VLDL, and fails to translate, so uh, you get less of it. Um, but, okay. So again, uh, this is for informational purposes only. It's not medical advice. If you have a medical question, contact a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.